Hello friends, welcome to Insights I Can Initiative. In today's video, we are going to discuss about following five topics. The first topic is Gulf of Aden and the second one is Green Leaf Volatiles. Third one, NASA to train an Indian astronaut for ISS mission, International Space Station. Fourth one, Global Biodiversity Framework Fund. And the fifth one is Supplementary Grant. These are the five topics we are going to discuss in today's video. The first one, Gulf of Aden. You know the Gulf of Aden, this is the area. And Gulf of Aden actually it is act as a connecting link between the Arabian Sea as well as the Red Sea. And this Gulf of Aden, it connects to Red Sea through Babel Mandib. Babel Mandib. Okay. And it connects to Arabian Sea on the other side. Why we are discussing about this Gulf of Aden now? Recently, one of the commercial ship belongs to America. It was being captured by few armed personnel. So that the commercial ship, it given warning sig signals to American Navy and American Navy rescued the ship. In this context, we are going to discuss about the strategic importance of Gulf of Aden and its economic interest, I mean importance and its military importance. By the way, if you remember, near to this Gulf of Aden, in one of the country, China is having their military base. What is the name of the country? Put your answer in the comment section. Now, we'll go back to this particular topic. US Navy warship, they responded to the distress call from commercial tanker in the Gulf of Aden that had been seized by armed individuals. And of course, fortunately, the vessel is now safe. This is the context. Now, let's see details. The Gulf of Aden is a water body located in the Arabian Sea. Like I said earlier, between the Yemen in the north, Gulf of Aden, Yemen in the north and Africa that is Somalia in the south. It, it act as, it act as, you know, like link between the Arabian Sea and Red Sea. It connects to Red Sea through Babel, Mandip Strait. You know, that strait is a narrow water body which connects two larger water bodies. Now, let's see significance of this Gulf of Aden in terms of strategic importance. It is one of the very significant trade routes between the Middle East and the Europe. In regarding the regarding the oil shipment as well, it is also act as a, one of the significant trade routes. Of course, it is one of the busiest trade point and of course, it is a choke point as well regarding the shipping. Choke point is the one of the busiest routes, nothing but. Next, socio-political significance. So, what are the socio-political significance? The main concern is piracy concern. There are there are wide reports that ships in this area they are subjected to pirate activities from the Somalia, especially primarily from Somalia. Because of that, ships are mainly generally they are guarding by naval patrols and security measures. Geopolitical dynamics. Because this is very important route, many of the countries try to gain control over that region. Best example, China recently built one of their army base near Djibouti, near to this. Gulf of Aden that wanting to control and influence and access the maritime trade through this route. So, this is the topic number one Gulf of Aden. The second one, the second one is regarding the green leaf volatiles. What are these green leaf volatiles? For example, when a plant subjected to any stress, it may be due to human like cutting or it may be due to any insects. When a plant is, ex, you know, like subjected to that kind of stress, plant release certain chemicals. These chemicals will give signals to the neighboring plants and these chemicals will attract some other insects. Those insects will come and eat this prey. Okay? When plant is, for example, when plant leaf is attacked by caterpillar, in response to that attack, plant may release certain chemicals so that other insects which can eat caterpillar, they may attract it towards the plant. This kind of a response from plant that can be happen only through this green leaf volatile. Recently, few scientists, they done research on genetically modified mustard. How this genetically modified mustard is responding to green leaf volatiles? What are the changes happening in these plants? And how these are relevant to the research as well as the commercial scale? We will check. Green leaf volatiles recently. Professor Masagu of Toyota, 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 Masagu Toyota and his team at Setama University in Japan, they devised a certain methods to observe plant response to green leaf volatiles. Green leaf volatiles are chemicals 
they are released by plants when they are under attack so that they help to these plants to communicate and defend against potential harm they communicate by using this green leaf volatiles observations when these scientists when they expose the green leaf volatiles to the genetically modified mustard the mustard experienced the high level of the calcium it indicating that plant ability to detect these green leaf volatiles and plant response to the green leaf volatiles now as an aspirant you have to know what are the different types of green leaf volatiles it includes aldehydes such as hexanol and hexanol then alcohol hexanol and hexanol if any compound end with ol all that means the it belongs to alcohols if they are end with al aldehydes okay and esters c double o r esters exyl acetate these are some of the chemical components which act as a green leaf volatiles and which helps to plants in communicate to other plants as well as to defend against the dangers the third topic number third america the nasa nasa came forward it and nasa announced that they are going to train one astronaut from india and that astronaut is going to going to go to international space station 2024 and nasa also announced that in 2024 both india and nasa that means isro and nasa they are going to launch nisar we are going to discuss about what is that nisar and what are the applications of nisar now let's see why it is in news us space agency nasa will train indian astronauts for its mission to international space station by the end of 2024 you know the students international space station international space station it is reaching to its expiry date and it is going to be taken out of its service it is going to be taken down into ocean very soon in few years recently even russia also announced that they are exiting from international space station in the consideration of they would like to build their own international space station of course china is also already building their own space station india is also having ambitions we set target as 2035 to have our own space station and isro also announced that their collaboration program between the nasa and isro that is nisar satellite it is going to be launched in first quarter of 2024 let's see international space station it is going to be decommissioned in 2031 this iss it will be removed from its orbit around the earth and it will be plunged into the ocean at a point very far away from the human habitation Indian space station India is planning to have its own space station called Bharatiya Antariksha station you must remember that all these space stations they revolve and they placed in the low earth orbit that you have to understand leo it is known as this internet indian space station it is going to be built by isro it is going to be completed by 2035 isro scientists they set up target for the space station by 2035 and after once we launch this space station we would like to launch indian sun to the moon as well by 2040 okay through this i mean extension to this indian space station and nisar nisar is a combined satellite developing by both nasa as well as Nis- N- isro this nisar stands for nasa isro synthetic apparatus radar it is a joint project between the nasa and isro when this nisar was launched it was the first it is going to be the first radar imaging satellite to use dual frequencies with the help of dual frequencies the earth observation can be more and with this satellite for every 12 days for every 12 days this particular satellite is going to survey entire earth's land as well as its ice cover so that we can get the information related to effect of global warming on ice caps as well it has a 3 years duration from its launching sometimes the uh, the duration can be extended as well it depends on the mission and the next topic topic number 4 it is about the global biodiversity framework fund global biodiversity framework fund recently reports are suggesting that developed countries are not contributing enough money for this global biodiversity framework fund in this context we will try to understand when this fund was created and who are going to contribute money to this fund and how this fund is different from global environment facility gef okay and we will also discuss about this cop 15 regarding the biodiversity cop 15 biodiversity summit let's see why it is in news 
recently experts said that this biodiversity framework fund it is lacking funds and financial commitments from the conservating countries this global biodiversity framework fund it is creating to improve the investment in restoration as well as the renewal of the biodiversity okay of course in india one of the highest biodiversity spots are western ghat and of course we are having the bio i mean biodiversity hotspots as well okay biodiversity biodiversity spheres biospheres this fund was established at 7th assembly of the global environment facility in vancouver it helps to in, it helps to countries to achieve the targets how many 23 targets which we set up in this kunming montreal global biodiversity framework actually this kunming montreal biodiversity framework it is the cop 15 biodiversity framework and now we are going to have a cop 28 climate climate summit this fund is different from global environment facility because global environment facility is only dependent on 40 donating countries compared to that this fund can accept money even from the private players as well of course this fund can access money from the global environment facility regarding the biodiversity okay this facility so far has a cumulative budget of 5.25 billion for 2020 2026 out of this 36 percentage will be allocated for the biodiversity purpose only to improve the biodiversity this is about the global this uh, global environment global biodiversity framework fund so tell me students in which year we enacted the biodiversity act put your answer in the comment section next one is about the budget recently government of india proposed for additional funds in the form of the supplementary grants from the budget actually when 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 the money proposed in the budget when it is insufficient then government will try to take money out of the consolidated fund by proposing the grants if government is providing some additional services for that if they require money then government will propose for the additional grant for already announced fund already announced scheme if money is not sufficient then government will go for the supplementary grant if government would like to exchange money from one department to another department then government may go for the token grant and if parliament allows the government to take unlimited man- amount of the money in the form of blank check that is known as out of credit of course whatever the money spent through out of credit that money will be audited by the pac that is a different story now let's see union government they would like to increase funding for the fertilizers food and fuel subsidies as well as for the mandrega as well by introducing supplementary demand for grants supplementary demand for grants in the coming winter session supplementary demand for grants when government is unable to meet it funds then it will it may require for the additional funds that additional funds can be raised through supplementary grants the purpose it helps to cater various needs including subsidies for fertilizers food fuel as well as it support schemes like rural employment guarantee like we discussed apart from the various types of sub, i mean this grants based on the nature based on the requirement we can divide into token grants technical demands and substantive cash demands that means if we require some of the high amount of the money that is known as substantive demands technical demands means changing this uh, savings from one department to another department same like token grant this token demand is about the symbolic allocation that means the routine allocation required for the various schemes you don't need to remember this you have to remember whatever i said earlier to you such as additional grants supplementary grants token grants and out of credits those you have to remember now let's see mcq which of the following countries borders the gulf of aden which one amen borders the gulf of aden now today's main question green leaf volatiles have emerged as crucial signaling molecules in plant defense mechanism and interplant communication discuss the significance of these green leaf volatiles in plant biology and their role in environmental interactions and their potential applications in agriculture this is the main topic now we will do the quick revision in today's current issues video we discussed about following these five topics and this is the detailed analysis of today's current issues 
Thank you.